Now let's talk about how you define your scope of your greenhouse gas inventory or carbon footprint. Now a lot of people make the mistake of using the term scope and boundary interchangeably, but I'm going to really go into detail and explain exactly how scopes is defined within greenhouse gas inventory and reporting because it's important you have that baseline if you're trying to communicate it, calculate it, or get data from other people. There are three operational scopes around greenhouse gas inventory reporting. Now, there's referred to as scope one, which are direct emissions. These are things that you and your organization burn. So fuel in your vehicles, natural gas or steam that you burn in your boilers or in your own furnaces within your organization. That is direct scope one emission. Scope two emission is energy that someone else burns that you purchase. So if you think of it, electricity, a power plant, they generate and they burn it. They put it on a wire, it comes out of your plug. That is scope two emissions, that's indirect. Now scope three is everything else. So if you think about it and you're trying to figure out what is scope one, scope two, scope three, it's really easy. Scope one are things that you burn, natural gas, fuel, steam. Scope two, electricity. Everything else is scope three. So that's your commuting, that's your waste, that's your recycling, your business travel. It's shipping, it's logistics, it's what your partners, your contractors, anything else that falls into scope three. Now, how do you determine which scope three sources to include? Now, for a lot of organizations, scope three can have the biggest opportunity for not only operational improvement and cost savings, but also for employee engagement. So it may be that you're an organization, say you're an airline, and 99% of your emissions are associated with your scope one, the fuel that you burn in your planes. However, there's a lot of things that you're doing within your own operations where you can engage employees, engage stakeholders, and save money. And these are things you want to look at. If you're in the service sector, you know, most of your emissions are going to tie up in business travel, the energy in your buildings, and in your commuting. If you're in the manufacturing sector, it's, it's going to be in your production and your distribution. So it's important that you determine what scope three sources to include, but also realize, you know, what's going to be a way that we can engage our employees, find cost savings, and improve our greenhouse gas, environmental, and social performance at the same time. Let's just give you an example. Duke Energy, now they are, you know, a company, a power producer. They produce most of their own electricity. All of their emissions are pretty much wrapped up with scope one. Emissions from energy that they produce and burn. A company like IKEA totally views things differently. They want to look at their scope one, two, and three emissions. In fact, they go out really far to see how do customers travel to their stores because they figure that that is a huge impact on the planet and they want to include that. And they also know that that will help inform them as to where to set their store locations. 